sure how I to do this because I was intending to do it over in South Street, but I'm going to go to Owen now. Maybe if you want, I don't know if you want to focus in on that. But um, uh, it depends on how bright the screen is. Uh, well, uh, I can get a little closer, I guess. And uh, yes, okay. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's okay. I could get it closer. Yeah, this has got a lot of. Uh, okay, yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay uh, all right, then I've got it. I've got it squarely now. So I thought it was important for um, me to introduce the company a little bit because Citizen M is not a well-known hotel brand in the United States and Europe. It's uh, become more uh, dominant. Um, we've got the majority of our hotels are in Europe right now as well as in Asia. Um, and we're just now rolling out in uh, the United States on the east and the west coast. So I'll, I'll go ahead and um, kind of jump on it. Um, so, very different company than a typical hotel company. We're vertically integrated. We've got our own uh, financing design, sort of integrated design, um, uh, project management, delivery, uh, legal, everything, and then as well as operations, which is unlike a lot of hotel companies where they essentially come in and develop develop a hotel uh, under a brand, like uh, I won't even use under a brand, and then it's operated by a separate operator. So we're sort of a holistic company. Um, really feel like we're not like any other hotel. Uh, very different in, in that um, uh, we're a little bit more edgy, funky, um, uh, uh, tech savvy. It's a very technologically oriented hotel. Um, so, M stands and, for and the underlying concept behind that is that there's really kind of a new generation of traveler now. So, you know, we live in a tech community, essentially. Uh, Silicon Valley, San Francisco is really a tech community. So we're, we're sort of um, focused on that market, the, the uh, sort of tech savvy, younger generation, um, people that are traveling. Uh, the one thing that we, we find in this younger group is that they are very value conscious, and that's really where we come in, um, and I'll explain that a little further. So um, the Citizen M experience, so what is the Citizen M experience? Um, so we, uh, we don't have a traditional check-in. We use kiosks similar to like an airport. Or, uh, or like banking, like ATM, you go up, and even today we're actually rolling out an app on your phone, so you can check in online, or check in on, on the app, and then walk into the hotel, up to one of the kiosks, and there's a reader that will read your phone. If you basically, you make your own key. There's somebody there to help you if you need help, um, but for the most part, people sort of get it after a while. Um, the second thing is, is our, our room type. We only have one room type. We don't have suites. We have basically a single room type with a, a king size bed that's at the, at the window. We've got sort of the, the level of finishes is, um, it's very smartly done, very uh, uh, clean, precise, clean. Um, um, we use uh, Hans Grohe uh, shower heads, uh, sort of your, everything's sort of based on a European sort of standard. That, uh, is we're bringing over to the, over to the U.S. Um, so single room type. Um, so in exchange for this sort of smaller room, um, we've expanded the uh, uh, living areas and sort of the, the so the living room, which we call it. When you enter when you enter our hotel, there's a large living room with sort of a bar area, uh, lots of really comfortable seating. Um, so essentially, you're, you're trading um, uh, private space for public space. Um, so I, I included an example of the, the, our first hotel is in New York in Times Square. Uh, second one was in the Bowery in New York. Um, sort of, uh, and then um, our uh, so our rollout, um, our rock and rollout, is uh, in North America. We're focused on uh, the West Coast and the East Coast. So the primary cities on the West Coast is Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, maybe Portland, and possibly Vancouver, Canada. And then on the East Coast, we're focused in New York, Boston, Washington, D.C., and Miami. So really focused in the urban centers of, of uh, the United States. So 
So open hotels, we've got um, a bunch of hotels in Europe right now. First hotel was, the company is a Dutch company, so they're based out in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. And um, the first hotel was at the airport, at Schiphol Airport uh, in Amsterdam. Second one was uh, in Amsterdam City. And then they went to Rotterdam, they went to Paris, London. And so they have three in London right now, uh, three in Paris. We just recently opened uh, a second hotel at uh, uh, Garde Lyon in uh, Paris. Uh, the, the, the first ho uh, first hotel in Paris was at Charles de Gaulle at the airport. Uh, sort of some other examples of the hotels that we're building. They're, they're fairly iconic in their sort of shape and structure. The, the single uh, the single unit size lends itself well to sort of this modular sort of look, this blocky sort of look, um, and. and it, to me, it looks sort of iconic because we end, we end up putting sort of some artwork. The, the uh, originator of the company, the, the, the founder of the company, is very much into modern art. And so he typically puts uh, some sort of modern art on the inside that's, uh, um, uh, how do you say it, um, commissioned, right? Commissioned art or art on the outside of the building. In San Francisco, we're not able to do this. Uh, they, don't, they don't want us to have art on the outside of the building, so we're putting it on the inside. There's a, there'll be select locations on the inside of the uh, original artwork. That's because we have earthquakes here. Yeah. Yeah. Just on the exterior. Well, I mean, it's, that, that would be the consumer's logical viewpoint. You don't have uh, mosaics or anything on the outside of your building, so it doesn't fall off when the ground underneath is moving. Yeah. So under development, we've got um, in Taipei, Shanghai, um, as I said, this is a little bit old. The La Defense and the Garden Leon uh, recently opened. And then they've got one in the Paris Opera District that they're uh, developing. And then um, in the U.S., we've got uh, Los Angeles at Hollywood and Vine, right next to the Capitol Records building and Pantages Theater. Uh, we've got Union Square, which is ours, uh, in San Francisco, uh, 72 Ellis. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the design on that one. Uh, we've got one in Seattle, up in uh, Amazon country, sort of uh, South Lake Union, which is where Amazon sort of set their headquarters. And then uh, Boston Gardens on, uh, on top of the, the new station. It's one that's under construction right now. So uh, right across from the Flood Building, if you're familiar with the Flood Building on Powell Street, uh, is the 72 L site. Uh, this doesn't show up very well, but it's essentially right now a two-story um, parking garage. It's a surface level, one floor below grade. It was an existing brick building that was demoed down, and they basically planked across it, mm -hmm. uh, created a park, uh, sort of a parking structure, and there in park is the operator at this time. Uh, it's uh, Ellis O'Farrell parking garage on one side, uh, Hotel Union Square on the other, so it's sort of landlocked in this location. Um, some of the statistics, we've got 192 keys on 11 floors, uh, around 81,000 square feet. We're sort of positioning for, uh, there's an 8,000 square foot retail that has a mezzanine uh, set up for either uh, restaurant or retail. Uh, we've got a public open space on the roof level uh, at the front of the building, around 2,200 square feet. We're sort of tweaking those numbers a little bit. Um, as, so 14 months scheduled, uh, we're shooting for a Q1 2018 start, sort of late first quarter around March. Uh, project team, really a great uh, team of uh, people. Um, the company Concrete is out of Amsterdam. They came up with the original concepts for the, for the project and they've stayed involved and at every conceptual level they are involved in the project and then we transition to a technical architect. In this case, it's Gensler, who's a really strong local architectural firm. Uh, we've got AROP, who's a big uh, multinational, but they've got, uh, and we really selected these people because they have this sort of ability to roll out with us uh, throughout the United States. And Gensler has offices on the East Coast, West Coast, uh, as well as AROP does. Um, general contractor um, is TBD at this moment. Uh, so uh, RGR, uh, uh, Dan is our land use council, and then SF Codes is helping with permit expediting. So uh, rendering of the exterior, um, sort of ground level, 
Uh, we're using a, a limestone facade to, to be consistent with the Union Square Historic District. Um, so that elevation of the building. Uh, not, you can't really see this very well, I know that. The, the, uh, so we've got a basement level where all the uh, utilities are located. Um, we're not really excavating down much we're, we're, because it's already below grade, uh, except for, for footings. There's some footings in the water and it goes down below grade. Um, some more, more plans. So um, I put a, a site logistics plan in here so you can kind of understand how, how it would be set up. Uh, we, we will have a tower crane. Um, on site, as well as a man lift on the front of the building to take personnel up and down in the building, um, and temporary power. Any questions? Yes. Okay, you're pretty close to the metro, uh, the, new, yeah. the new Muni Metro. Uh, they're di doing a lot of digging around there. Uh, is that going to? You think that that's going to stay stable where you're building, or are you going to be going in at, after? that part of it gets done well we are we're probably a block away from the the, the new station so I don't anticipate that we would impact them necessarily uh -huh. I, I know that the, the one of the concerns is just the amount of construction in Union Square there's uh -huh. a lot of work going on and there has been for a long time so mm -hmm. we're very um, conscious of that and, and want to be a responsible contractor and, and, and developer um, so yeah I don't think that we would impact that project necessarily for them us. Okay, and let's see. You're going to be near John's Grill. Yes. Okay. John, yeah. Right. I'm meeting with John uh, in a week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. And he got his bird back. What's that? What happened? Uh, the Maltese falcon that he had was stolen, and uh, I think it, I think it got. Uh, this was a, a live bird. No, this was from the movie. This is a prop oh, from the movie, the, the Maltese okay. Falcon. Yeah, okay. uh, that. Yeah, John's grill was like. Oh, someone stole it out of the restaurant. Uh, somehow or other, yeah, and then it got returned. Hmm. It's called distraction. We pile up over here. And... Uh huh. Yeah. One thing at the back of the thing, basically. Hmm. Are you finished? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I get a geotechnic one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, um, because I'm, like everything else, I'm fascinated by what's underneath you. Yeah. Because you're more so on bedrock um, than actually on um, leftovers in 1906. Because the area you're in actually burned to the ground in 1906. Um, and so, um, yeah, I'm curious as what is, is underneath where you are. So I, um, like everything else, I'm curious. Uh, are you piling under your face though? No, it's a mat foundation. So typically, we try to do uh, mat foundation as possible. You know, we do. We did purchase the property on uh, Folsom Street, and so it's interesting to hear you talking about 999 Folsom and the issues down there. So we were 816 Folsom, so uh, it would be uh, good to get into that one. So I do, I am uh, familiar with the liquid faction issue. Excuse me, I'll come back. And the pile foundations. I was surprised to hear that they were doing 90 foot down piles. But, uh, well, so it does, I mean, it doesn't surprise me in this city. Okay. I've learned uh, over the 30 years of doing this, nothing surprises me anymore. Yeah. Uh, and it's really fascinating when you start studying um, the geology underneath and uh, finding out how well we're holding up the buildings and how well buildings built to almost non-existent code right after the earthquake are still standing right. um, after all this time. So it's really, it's really, it's, it's the ground here is really fascinating. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, you got to read the Maltese Falcon. I'll have to go over there and see that. I'll, I'll help John point it out to Yeah, me. it's on the second floor. They got a little, you know. Okay. Yeah, and the movie is good, too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we have our person from, from the city. Uh -huh. Yeah.
always. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my name is Kevin Kumutaka. I come from the city of San Francisco Department of Environment. We're the environmental agency that uh, helps set policies uh, for the city and county of San Francisco. We also work very closely with PG PG, the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, to help kind of set the city's ambitious environmental goals. Um, so you may be familiar with some of the practices. I think everyone's pretty familiar with the green, blue, and black bins. Um, San Francisco has an ambitious goal to achieve zero waste by 2020. So that means eliminating all the items that basically go to landfill and try to recycle and compost them because these are valuable resources that we're trying to reuse. Um, so my program that uh, I coordinate is the San Francisco Green Business Program. We work with businesses all over San Francisco to help them meet environmental standards. And if they meet our standards, they get certified as a green business. Our program services are completely free. So everything that we do as far as technical assistance, um, going on site to businesses, looking where we can save businesses energy, um, help reduce their waste bills, provide free, um, free items like aerators that are as simple as just going to your kitchen sink and then replacing the your standard you know, water flow rate that comes out of your sink is 2.2 gallons per minute. We give out aerators that are 0.5 gallons per minute, so it has a 77% water reduction. Um, all our services are completely free. And for businesses that do get certified, we uh, promote them through our online, we have a California database and a San Francisco Green Business database. Uh, they get to use our logo, so they get to promote themselves as a green business. And I think for the for most businesses, uh, the benefits are really just through their energy and water savings, their waste bills, um, and it's better for their employees and for their employees' health. A lot of employees like working for green businesses. And also, um, another thing we look at are like the the facilities cleaning products. So a lot of cleaning products, as you may know, have health effects or environmental impacts. So like simple cleaners like bleach or even some regular hand soaps, maybe asthmogens for people. Um, they can also, there's also a lot of like carcinogens. Um, so our department and our program will look through a list of cleaning products and to make sure that businesses are using products that are environmentally friendly, especially for those that are chemical sensitive. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much our program in a nutshell. Um, we do work with a bunch of other city departments, Department of Public Health, uh, San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Uh, we do make sure that all the businesses in our program meet environmental health and safety compliance regulations. Uh, but yeah. does anybody have any questions? Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, I'm involved in the low flow process. Mm -hmm. They don't clean the clay as easy. Yeah. It takes almost twice as much water to clean a pan with food residue in it with low flow than it did with the original fossil. And if you're doing that in businesses, particularly restaurants, they have to have that high pressure power yeah. in a washing machine to wash the pans and the dishes to meet the minimum health code. Right. Um, so how do you get the business to lower its water footprint but maintain health code. Absolutely. So yeah, we work in tandem with the, the health department, um, especially for restaurants and like for their chemical use. 